This morning, I want you to turn to Ephesians chapter 6, verse 12, and I want you to forget that scripture. And then I want you to <laughs> turn to Proverbs eighteen twenty one. Ephesians 6 was our Sunday school class. That was kind of a joke. You'd have had to, you'd have, had to have understood what I was saying. I want to talk about something that God is really demonstrating this morning. And that's the power to bless. Say blessings. On three. One, two, three. Blessings. That's good. How many of you rather be blessed than cursed? Have you ever been blessed? Well, there is a theology of blessing. There's a doctrine of blessing. And I want to share it with you this morning. The understanding of the power of blessing could revolutionize lives, families, and our nation if we understood it. If you understood the power that you possess because of what Christ did, you have a power to bless others. And it always has to do with this, the tongue and the voice. We don't do it silently. It's done with a full voice. We'll talk about that. And according to 1 Peter 2.5 and 1 Peter 2.9, you and I are a priesthood of believers. Say, I'm a priest. What's a priest do? He priests. Have you ever wondered? The Bible said we're a kingdom of priests, did it not? So if I'm a priest, what do priests do? They priest. They bless. They teach. They love. They worship. They sing. They give glory. They give honor. Because they are priests. Look at your neighbor and say, man, you're a good looking priest. Tell them, you're a priest. Proverbs 8, 18, 21. Life and death are in the power of the tongue. Well, that's scary. Proverbs 15, 4. The tongue that brings healing is a tree of life. But a deceitful tongue crushes the spirit. So the tongue's powerful, isn't it? Yeah, you've got it right there. A wholesome tongue is a tree of life. But perverseness therein is, in a, is a breach in the spirit. And we have to understand that my purpose today is to, not to speak on the power of cursing, but rather on the power of blessing. We need blessing in the kingdom today. How many of you know we've got a lot of depression? A lot of discouragement? We've got a lot of people that are about ready to give up. We've got a lot of people that are they're saying, well, preacher, if this is all there is to it, I'm in agony. I'm going to go another way. At least I'm going to try to enjoy what little life I've got. I'm going to be an epicanarian. Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we perish. It's sad that much of the church thinks in that direction. A lot of people in Christianity today have forgotten the power of being blessed by God. We're blessed to wake up this morning. You're blessed with the air that you're getting to breathe. We're blessed we're in this church, beautiful building, and we can sing and worship and have, we've got so much talent. We're blessed people. But you'd think there was something wrong with us by the way we act. You ought to stand up here and look out. Boy, pastor has to look at this every Sunday. If I stood up here like this every Sunday, how would you feel? I like to see people smile. Act like you're enjoying this. I can tell a joke or two if that'll help. If you laughed, you'd be the first time in my life anybody ever laughed at my jokes. My purpose today isn't to speak on the curse, but on the blessing. I've had a lot of people come to me and say, I don't really have a ministry, Pastor. I don't know where I fit. I don't have anything to do. Well, I'm about to give you something to do. How many of you feel like you really don't have something to do in the ministry? Don't lie. 
Liars are friars. You got that? Liars are friars. How many of you have ever felt like there wasn't anything that you could give? That you, anything you could do in the kingdom? Let me tell you what you've got power to do. You've got power to bless every day of your life. You can bless others all the time. You can bless family. You can bless friends. You can bless our pastor. You can bless one another. You can bless this community in which we live. You can bless our nation. You can bless our president. We can bless when we can't do anything else. The word blessing means a lot more than happy. You say, well, I'm not happy, so I'm not blessed. Blessing doesn't have anything to do with being happy. It has to do with being in the will of God and knowing that God loves you. Before we leave this morning, and I meant to tell the, the children, I want them back in here when we have the altar service, okay? Somebody be responsible to go get them when we come to the altar. I want them to partake of this. Genesis one twenty two. Let's see what blessing means. God blessed them and said, Be fruitful, increase in number, fill the water in the seas, and let the birds increase on the earth. Who was he talking to there? Not people. He was talking to the animals. God blesses animals. And water. And the earth. He looked at it, blessed it, and said it's good. And when God speaks something good, it actually becomes good. It's a blessing from his voice. When God says it's good, that means more than I like it. It means my blessings upon it. I love what it is. It is what I made it to be. I want to be what God made me to be. And you should as well. He was saying my blessing isn't to make you happy. It's to cause you to multiply. You ought to write this down. To be blessed, one of the major uh, signs of blessing is multiplication. Say multiply. If I'm blessed, I multiply. I increase. Whatever it is that I'm doing, that God wants me doing, if he's blessing it, it's being multiplied in my life. When God puts his blessing on you, it's fruitfulness. What do you mean fruitfulness? If God's blessing you, you'll be fruitful. It's a sign of blessing. Those who say God's called them to raise a work and never see any multiplication are most likely, not always, but most likely not called to do what they said. I've had people tell me, well, I'm called to be a leader. How do I know I'm called to be a leader? Would you like to know? Anybody? Raise your hand if you'd like to know. Okay, I'm going to tell you. Turn around, look, see if anybody's following. If they're not following, you're not a leader. You say, well, that's just too simple. It has to be simple for me. If God is, in, if God is blessing what you're doing, there will be an increase or a fruitfulness to that thing that you're called. Genesis 1, 28. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful, increase in number, fill the earth, subdue it, rule over the fish of the sea, the birds of the air, and over every living creature that moves on the ground. Man was told to fill the earth. God said, I'm going to bless you. I want you to multiply and fill the earth, and I want you to subdue it. Subdue it. That means we bend it to our will. God gave us authority to have the word, this earth bend to our will if we're walking in his will. You see, where are you going? Well, you'll see here in just a minute. When the blessing of God's upon you, you have not only the power to multiply, you have the power to overcome. Well, preacher, I felt God called me, but the devil just beating up on me. We talked about this in Sunday school. You ever feel like the devil just been on you all day, bless his holy name? You know what I said. I've heard people in testimony services, they used to have those. This one lady got up and said, the devil's been beating up on me all week, bless his holy name. Now I knew she wasn't talking about the devil, 
But sometimes Christians act like the devil can beat them up anytime he wants. We've got authority over principalities and powers in heavenly places. We have authority in the name of Jesus. We are a blessed people, a blessed generation. We are a mighty priesthood, great warriors in the kingdom of God. Genesis 12, 2 said, I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great and you will be a blessing. You'll be a blessing. Look at somebody beside you. You're such a blessing. Gary, you're a blessing. You're a blessing. Flake, you're a blessing. I know you wonder about it, but you're a blessing. Robbie, you're a blessing. Act like it. You're a blessing. Act like it, Lord. You're a blessing. You need to go around and thinking in your mind. Folks, if you knew it was coming down this dusty road, you'd be excited because I'm a blessing. If I'm coming into your life to pray for you, you ought to be getting excited because I'm a blessing and I'm coming to bless you. And who I bless, God blesses. That's what he said. Here, God blesses Abraham. He's, he, I want to show you the circumference of the word blessing. The blessing of God on Abraham was even going to make his name great. He said, when I bless you, your name's going to be great. You said, preacher, no, I'm nothing. I'm a nobody. I'm a worm. I hate that song. I'm not a worm anymore. I'm a child of the Most High God. I was on an airplane. I'm sitting there years ago. We're flying around, sitting beside this guy. He was a businessman. I was probably 30. I was going to preach somewhere and he, he struck up a conversation and he was asking me about my relatives and what I did. And I said, oh, I, I'm a prince. He said, you're what? I said, I'm a prince. My father's a king. He looked at me and the lady on the other side overheard it. She's looking at me. They were in the presence of royalty. They were looking at me like, Oh, well, do you have a castle? A little boy up front. You know what I'm thinking? They said, you're, you're the child of a king? I said, yeah. I said, I've got everything I need. My father owns the cattle on a thousand hills. And he owns the potatoes under those hills. Boy, they're about ready to bow down. They want my autograph, I'm sure. They said, what's his name? Who, what is your last name? I said, his name is Jesus Christ, the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, the greatest being there ever was, ever will be, ever shall be. My dad has everything I ever need. I'm blessed. I'm a child of a king. The blood of Christ flows through me. I didn't say it that loud. I thought about it. When I said that, the guy looked at me, turned around. He didn't talk to me again. He didn't ask me anything else. I'm thinking, what's wrong with him? But you see, we're, we are the children of a king. You're a prince or a princess. Princess Jackie. Scary, isn't it? Blessed. 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 You're blessed. But it goes beyond that. Then he says, I will bless. He's talking to Abraham. I'll bless those who bless you. Uh oh I will bless those who what? Bless you. And I will curse those who curse you. We're, we get, we're promised. We, we share in the promise of Abraham, the covenant. It's what the Bible says. So if he, what he said to Abraham pertains to me as well. You want to know who you ought to bless? And I think we ought to look for people to be a blessing to. If you want to bless somebody, find somebody that's already blessed. You say, well, I don't want to give to them. They've got everything. They're blessed. That's exactly who you need to be blessing. We need to bless our pastor. He's a blessed man. But I have a promise. 
when I bless him who is blessed, I get blessed. And I want to be blessed. Do you? Well, then start blessing those who have the touch of God upon them. But it gets a little different too. But anyone whom you, who you bless is blessed. And anyone who curses whom God blesses is cursed. You're not going to like this part probably. If I curse the thing that God does, I speak evil of him and his work. Let me give you an example. There's this TV preacher who's greatly blessed. And I don't like everything he does or I'm jealous of what he is ministry or whatever it pertains to. And I begin to speak evil of him. And he may not do everything right. Like I do. You know, I'm perfect like you. But some of those guys on television, they're far from perfect. And so I speak evil of them. But God's blessing them. What have I just done to myself? I didn't curse them. I cursed myself and the hand of God removes from me. I begin to speak evil of somebody in the congregation. I'm whispering lies to other people about Aaron. Be hard to find a lie, but but I get off that. But you're you're saying bad things about Jim or Fred. And they're being blessed of God. And you curse them with your mouth. You know what happens? It doesn't, the curse without a purpose cannot light. And it returns back to the one who sent it. You curse those who are blessed by God. You speak evil of ministers and elders in the church or deacons or Anybody that's a child of God, if you're speaking evil of them, you better know exactly what you're doing. Because if you don't, the thing you speak against them will come back on you. That's what the Word of God says. Now we know why so many people have troubles. They've been cursing that which is a blessed thing. I knew that'd get a bunch of applause. I thought you'd just clap your hands and go crazy. Anytime you think it's your job to curse those who don't do the same thing you do, but they're blessed of God, even though, and even though you don't understand or they don't understand you, you automatically take a curse upon your life. What does a curse mean? It means the hand of God's off of what you're doing. It means the hand of God comes off your family. Let me tell you some of the ways people curse. They curse their children. You'll never amount to anything. You just cursed your son or daughter. You're an idiot. You're so stupid. You couldn't, you couldn't get out of the rain if there was a, a hut standing right beside you. You're blind as a bat. And we wonder why they grow up and rebel. We've been cursing them all their life. I was told, you'll never go through school. You'll never get there through school. One time I was told they have to burn the school down to get me out. There might have been a little bit of truth in that. But, but I, I was told I'd never amount to anything. I can't remember one time growing up, somebody told me they loved me. Now they would show me by doing things, but there's nothing like the power of those words. You're loved, not because you're the best person or because you're this or because you're that. It's because you're my child. See, God loves me in spite of me. God loved me with all my faults, all my shortcomings, all the things, all the garbage I carry and the baggage I carry. Jesus looked past those and said, God said, who do you want? We need another preacher. Son, pick you out one. Jesus looks down. He finds this guy that's almost an alcoholic. Well on his way. Whose mouth is so full of profanity. Every other word's a cuss word. Nobody would have chosen him. Jesus looks down and said, I'll take old Paul Doherty. Huh. The angels look around and say, 
What? And the people in the church say, you got to be kidding. Folks, you don't even know who I was before. You don't need to. Because he's dead. But when I, the night I got saved, it started a revival. It did. It started a revival because nobody in there believed that I'd ever be any good. They were mad because Diane had married me. She married me before I was saved. Shame on her. We need to discourage that among our children. But she did. How could she resist my charm? You understand that, don't you? You've been around me. I mean, here I was walking. I was a young stud, beautiful body. I come strutting into her life. I knew she was looking. She'd sit beside me on that couch and squeeze up a little bit closer. I'm over to her house. I'm scared to death of her dad. I don't know why, little guy. And but something about him, I knew he was a preacher. I didn't, it, yeah, I didn't especially like preachers. I was kind of afraid of them, especially one I'm dating his daughter. We're in the living room on the couch. She reaches over and kisses me on my mouth. <laughs> Scared me near to death, Robbie. Because all I can think about is not those hot lips. It was daddy in the other room. What's going to happen? But things progressed from there. And uh, we got married. I wasn't saved yet. But my wife was a Christian. My wife was praying for me. She wasn't saying bad things about me. I was blessed because I was in the presence of someone else who was blessed. Do you know the righteous can even bless the wicked? You can walk into a business if you're blessed of God where the people hate Christians and they'll do business with you and wonder why they ever did. Because you're blessed. There's power in blessing. And the night I got saved, I got baptized in the Holy Ghost all the same night. People came in. As they're coming into the service, weren't he preaching that night? A couple hours later, there were still people there shouting and praying and singing just because old nice Paul Doherty got saved. And from that day forward, I've had the power to bless. Thank you, Lord. Don't get bored and leave me here. Let me put my water there safely. Let's go on. When the blessing of God is upon you, whoever blesses who God is blessing becomes blessed. What does that mean? Say I'm blessed with tremendous ministry, business, whatever it is. And I look on someone else who is walking in a mighty anointing and a blessing of God. And I say, I curse that thing he doing. I don't like it. And I speak evil of him and his work. Basically, I'm jealous. What happens the thing about me that God was blessing is suddenly no longer blessed. Some of the problem we have as Christians is that mouth. There's power in your words. And much of what happens to us, probably all of it, is a result of the mouth running where it shouldn't be. We shouldn't speak evil of one another. Turn to somebody and say, you shouldn't speak evil of me. And I shouldn't speak evil of you. But if we don't catch any fish when we go fishing, it might be different. He knows. I'm, anytime you think it's your job to curse those who don't do the same as you, you automatically take a curse upon your life. I want to bless those who even disagree with me. Because that means the blessings they've received then come on me. I want to look for the good in people, not the evil. There's plenty of evil in the world. 
But we as Christians need to look at the good that is upon God's people. I better move on. I want to get through. All the people on earth are to be blessed through the church. We are to bless the world. The problems of the world are our fault. It's because we've not taken our place of authority. Our nation is in the message in because Christians sat back and allowed the enemy to run rampant and didn't say anything until it was too late. Now we're fighting to just try to get back to even. And we've cursed leaders when we should have been blessing them. We've spoken evil of men we shouldn't have been speaking evil of. God help us. I want to expand the word now. How many of you know that Ishmael was a mistake? Well, anybody ever watch the news? Ishmael was a mistake. He's cutting heads off now. But Abraham, because of his own blessing in Genesis 17, said, Oh Lord, may Ishmael be blessed. What an example. Ishmael, God says, I'm going to bless Ishmael. I'm going to make him father of many nations. And he did. But Ishmael should have never been there for the blessing. But because of unrighteousness and not obeying God, Ishmael came along. And today, the world is still fighting. And God's chosen people, the Jews, are still, uh, there's a, still a desire to destroy them by the Arabs. Why? Because of what happened back there. What's going on? Abraham wanted God to bless his mistake. You've got to understand God isn't near as religious as you are. He's also more forgiving than you are. And because of his blessing on you, there are times when even your mess ups can be blessed. I've had mess ups that were blessed. God, look at Miss Paul, you messed that up royally. I said, yes, I did, Lord. Help me out. And the day or two days before a building that we had in Bryant that needed to be sold, when I'd finally run out of all money to pay for it and the time for the next payment coming up, and I would have lost everything invested in that property. I mean, everything would have been gone. The day or two days before it was due and we would have lost it, God brought the victory and blessed my mess up and bought a buyer for that property, which was a mess up that I should have never done in the first place. God will bless a repentant heart. You ever mess up? God can bless your mess up. Now your wife's not your mess up. And your husband's not your mess up. You understand that, right? Yes, yes, preacher, I do. Look what here it involves me, involves my household. Second Samuel six eleven. The ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed Edom, the Gittite, for three months, and the Lord blessed him and his entire household. They're bringing the ark up, and it it was tipped because they put it on oxen. It tilted. And the Bible, God had said, nobody's to touch that ark. And what was his name? Uriah? Who? Yeah, Uriah reached over to, all he was going to do is, is balance it. And immediately he falls down dead because of the lack of obedience. But they left it now. They got scared and they leave it at the house of Obed-Edom. And for three solid months, Every Obedium goes out the next morning, it's like the field of dreams. His corn's eight feet tall. 5,000 heads on each stalk. I'm, I'm exaggerating a little hyperbole. But everything he did was blessed. His cattle started having babies one after another. Everything was going good. Everything he touched was blessed. Why? The presence of God was on his property. When the presence of God is in your home and fills your home, you will be blessed. I want the presence of God in my house. I want the presence. You say, well, there's some ungodly people. Forget that. 
You are the godly one. The blessing comes from those who trust the Lord. And it will overpower any other force, any principality or power. Wow. When you're blessed, whatever your hand finds to do, he'll bless it, cause it to multiply. I'll never finish this. We must learn what to bless. Luke 2, 34. Simeon blessed them and said to Mary, his mother, this child is destined to cause the falling and rising of men in Israel and to be a sign that will be spoken against. Simeon turns around and says to Mary and Joseph, I bless you. Wow. How many of you have heard of Balak? Balak was a prophet. Sees it. Well, he was a king, rather. He saw Israel coming through. He gets scared to death, picks up the phone and says, Hey, Balaam, prophet, whatever you bless is blessed. Whatever you curse is cursed. Will you please come on over and curse Israel? We do that. Believe me. Now, Balak gets all excited. He just fired up. He gets up on the mountain with Balaam, builds him an altar. He knows the minute Balaam curses the people, he can run out there with his army and wipe Israel out. All right, Balaam, he said, I'm going to give you twice the amount of money. First, Balaam asked God if he can curse Israel. God says, no. Then Balaam comes back and said, I'll give you twice that. I'm going back and talk to God. God, I know now it's your will for me to curse Israel. I mean, he's offering me a mountain of gold. God finally gets tired of it and says, just do what you want. Balaam's all excited. I'm going to get a mule full of gold. I mean, it'll take two donkeys and a camel to carry all this stuff I'm going to get. Yeah, it'll hurt Israel a little bit, but that's okay. They'll get over it someday. And he goes up there and he's prepared to curse them. And now, here they come. Balak's all excited, got the altar ready, got the horn ready to put the army and slaughter Israel. He said, all right, Balaam, get up there and do your thing. Balaam jumps up. He's ready to go, opens his mouth. And you know what came out? It came out. He said, Bless, you are blessed of the Lord. They shall increase. You will decrease. And they shall take this land. And Balaam's looking, wait, I'm, I mean, Balaam's doing that. And Balak said, whoa, I gave you all this money to curse them. Now get up there and do your cursing. And he looks and he said, the money's gone. Because how can I curse what God has blessed? Folks, there are people that hate the church, that hate you and I as Christians. And they'll speak evil of you. And instead of letting somebody hurt your feelings, well, the preacher didn't shake my hand right. Brother Paul combs his hair. He parts it on the wrong side. Nobody remembered it was my birthday. I'm leaving that place. We need men and women full of commitment. Men and women that are warriors. We've got a church full of pansies, wimps, and wallies. We do. They're afraid. They get offended at the least little thing. They wonder why things happen in their life like it does. Because the hand of God goes off of them. When they begin to curse with their words that which is blessed. I pray that you understand me. I, can't, I cannot bless whom God curses. He said, I cannot curse what God has blessed. You and I need to be the same way. We need to bless what God's a blessing. I'm going to show you how to bless one another and I'll be through. I want you to know who you should bless. It says, to them who teach false doctrine, don't let them in your house and don't wish them God's speed. You hear me? Those who preach hate and bitterness and division... You don't even let them in your house. You don't eat with them. You don't walk with them. And you sure don't bless them. Boy, you say, oh, I don't like you for saying that. I don't care. Now to get the exciting part. This is for you. Hold on. Genesis 27, 27. Fathers, you can bless your family. 
So he went to him, kissed him. When Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he blessed him and said, Ah, oh, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. The father of a home can release blessings over his children, over his wife, anybody that's in his home. And then he begins to bless his sons, not because he's some great prophet, but because he is dead. That gives you the authority. Aaron, you can bless Sandra, Sandra. I say it right. You can bless her. Rhonda, am I ever going to get it right? <laughs> that gal sitting beside you, you can bless her. Whatever her name is. Julie. God's giving you the power to place your hands on your children. Even as they're ch little young children. You can bless them and speak the greatness of God. Johnny, you're going to be a great man of God. Mary Beth, the hand of the Lord is upon you. You're going to have a beautiful voice. You're going to be talented musically. And you're going to lead people in worship and giving glory unto the Most High. Instead of telling them they'll never mount anything every day, regardless of whether they're doing right or not, you're telling them in spite of all that, you'll grow into a mighty man or a mighty woman of valor. You're going to be a child of the Most High. I don't care what it looks like now. I don't care what trouble you've gotten into. I don't like it, but I'm telling you, you are going to be blessed. You're going to be called great in the house of God. We've got to watch what we say about our children and our family. Wives can invoke blessing on your husbands. You can do it on your children. Children can do it upon their fathers or mothers or brothers or sisters. You young people, you can bless your parents. How do I do it? Through your words. You speak blessing on them. But they didn't treat me right. They, I got, it was unfair. I got in trouble last night and Billy did it. Well, according to me, anything ever went wrong in our house, David did it. And mostly that was true. Do you understand what I'm saying? We blamed our parents for everything. I hate you when they get about 14 or 15. Any of y'all ever heard that? You never had a child that said they hated you? Wow, where y'all been? When my daughters got to a certain age, teenagers, I'll be called something else, demonagers. Yeah, and they come up and my daughter, she said, Daddy, it's all your fault. One time when she's a little bitty, she went to her first kindergarten class, came out and said, I can't, she's mad standing with her hands on her hip, that red hair flashing. I can't read, and it's all your fault. I said, that's why you're going to school. I said, you're going to be a great reader. I better hurry up, it's 12 o'clock. Here, let me give you one more. David, one of the members of his household, one, he comes home, he's excited, he's won victory. And he calls, he wants all his household staff. He wanted his wife, Michael, everybody, his sons, his daughters, come in here. Daddy's going to bless you all. But one of them didn't want to be blessed. Her name was Michael. The Lord bless me indeed. Have you seen the way you've been behaving? You have been like some vain fellow unveiling himself, dancing like a common man before the people of Israel. Don't you know that you are the pastor? And you're dancing in the church? Don't you know that you are a deacon? Don't you know you're the bell cow? Don't you know you have responsibility? And you're acting like a fool? You're over there beating on the drums and got one hand up and you're praising God. You look like an idiot. You've embarrassed me for the last time. What did David do, Kevin? He got all upset, put his head down, let his lip fall on the ground, couldn't walk because of his lip. No. He said, baby, if you think that was something, you wait till the next time I get touched by God. What I did out there was nothing compared to how I'm going to dance next time. 
He was blessed. Instead of being blessed, what happened to her? Because she cursed the blessed of God, something happened. She was made barren all the days of her life. I want you to catch what I'm saying. Your children want to do things. They're often either right or wrong, and it's your responsibility to discern which. It's up to you to bless what they're doing. They're not to go at anything alone without your blessing. 